Fuel management errors kill approximately 40 pilots a year in North America. A review of the accident reports reveals that most of these could have been avoided with proper fuel management. Fuel management begins before you get to the aircraft by planning your flight with sufficient fuel and reserves. That management should be based on time expected in the air and not on the distance to travel. A VFR flight is required to carry sufficient fuel to the destination, plus an additional amount of fuel to allow 30 minutes at cruise power setting by day and 45 minutes at night. There's also a requirement to allow additional fuel for contingencies like weather, wind and traffic delays. Plan beyond the minimums and allow a greater comfort level with the fuel you have aboard. Fuel management continues on the ramp. On your pre-flight, check for visible obstructions in your fuel vents. Also check your fuel before the first flight of the day. Avgas should be light blue in color. Jet A1 will be straw color, water will be clear. In a fuel tester, the differences between avgas and water can be difficult to detect, so pay very careful attention that you're not looking at a tester full of water. Also check for other contaminants like suspended particles that could block your fuel flow. If you find anything, get it checked out. If you're intending to refuel, be aware that it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for a freshly fueled tank to settle down sufficiently to accurately test. Fixed base operators check their storage tanks and trucks for water and contaminants on a regular basis, but it's always a good idea to verify before you fly. Line crew personnel are trained and take their responsibility for aviation safety seriously, but it's also your responsibility to verify the fuel truck has the correct fuel type for your aircraft. And at the completion of the fueling, visually check the quantity in your tanks and the security of the caps. On board, your fuel tank selector should be carefully managed. Some single engine aircraft checklists have the pilot ensure that the fuel selector is on both during the after start checklist and then again on both for the before takeoff checklist. Others have the pilot switch to one tank after start and then switch to the other tank at some point in the checklist. This is to verify that both tanks are properly fueling the engine. Whichever the case, the before takeoff checklist should contain and you properly follow the manufacturer's recommendation before committing the aircraft to flight. Another important step is a tactile check along with the visual to ensure the valve is indeed in the proper indent position. Neglecting to ensure the selector is in the proper position has caused many engine failures after takeoff and almost always leads to a tragic outcome. These tips will help ensure good fuel management before the aircraft takes off, but it doesn't stop there. Some aircraft require flight with the fuel selector set on either the right or the left tank and to switch at regular intervals. The risk is that the pilot becomes distracted by workload or simply forgets to reselect and runs one of the tanks dry. In order to prevent this, some pilots have designed a placard, which they can mount or hang in an obvious place, which simply states which tank is currently in use. Fuel gauges are notoriously inaccurate, and you should be familiar with what's normal for your aircraft. If your gauges are showing a fuel imbalance more than what you consider normal, the possibilities can include you have a fuel indication problem, you're experiencing a fuel flow restriction from one of your fuel tanks, or you have a fuel leak in one of your tanks. A fuel leak may be indicated by a significant drop in the fuel level on one of the gauges. There's little that can be done to confirm a fuel leak because avgas will evaporate almost instantaneously in flight. If you suspect a fuel leak, consider changing from both to left or right depending on where the leak appears to be. Many aircraft have an automatic crossfeed line between tanks and if you don't isolate the leaking tank, you could end up draining fuel from the non-leaking tank. A fuel restriction in one tank can be identified with adequate altitude and airspace by switching the fuel selector to the tank which has the most fuel, the one that doesn't appear to be draining. Should a power interruption occur, immediately select the opposite tank. Although a fuel gauge malfunction might not pose a problem to your flight, there's no way you can identify that it's the fuel gauge rather than something more critical. So regardless of the reason, if your fuel gauges are not performing normally, divert to the closest airport and check out the problem.